let us start discussion on another topic that is viscoelastic phenomena or viscoelasticity. We know that viscosity is a property of fluid. and elasticity is a property of solid. If we take a stress strain profile, stress represented by sigma, strain represented by epsilon, that means if we take a dumbbell specimen, You have to measure the tensile properties of a material. On application of tensile load, tensile force on this specimen, that keeps a profile in stress strain curve like this. On application of stress, deformation increases and gradually it passes through some stage where this linear variation of stress with strain moves towards nonlinearity and it passes through some region, comes down again, it may increase and it may fail. So, this is a property of solid on application of stress the material deforms. The deformation can be uh, increase in strain for tensile, tensile load, there can be deformation compressive deformation if the load is compressive. Now, here the stress is proportional to strain up to certain region which is known as Hooke's region, Hookean region. Means stress is equal to some constant into deformation epsilon. This constant is the proportionality constant is known as the Young's modulus. E is the Young's modulus. Uh, Young's modulus, Young, Young e is the Young's modulus and this Young's modulus indicates the elasticity or elastic behavior or elastic response of the solid which is time uh, uh, Young's modulus is a time independent parameter on release of the stress the specimen reverts back to its original dimension without any permanent change in its dimension and shape. Now, beyond such point, beyond certain limit, it deviates from linearity and deformation occurs in such a way that on release of the stress from any of these points on the stress strain curve, it cannot revert back to the original dimension instantaneously and it may uh, contain some uh, residual deformation in it which is called permanent set. So, this is a behavior of a polymer, polymeric material 
which shows deformation up to certain region linearly, proportionally and beyond which it changes. Now, such change over point is known as yield point, deformation, yield point, deform, uh, deformation at yield and it shows a plastic deformation. There can be other solids where the stress goes on increasing with strain and ultimately fail over because this is perfectly elastic body and uh, uh, we can say this is a strong material, but it can be brittle also. If the deformation is quite less, if it is stiff like this, this is a characteristic property of ceramic materials. Metal can behave like this there can be a necking and then it can fail anywhere after necking and uh, in that case this portion is not there this is due to this is due to molecular alignment which is called strain hardening or molecular alignment or that is due to the decrease of the dimension of this part where where necking occurs and um, it is a kind of uh, 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 engineering uh, it can be explained further uh, better with the help of uh, by comparing the engineering stress engineering stress with the true stress behavior engineering and true stress behavior anyway what i like to point out that this elastic region is instantaneous and proportional to the stress is proportional to strain and beyond the elastic region it shows plastic deformation or flow. Now, let us explain why this kind of phenomena occurs in materials like polymers. Polymer is called a viscoelastic material because in polymer we find elastic property of solid and viscous property of fluid. Due to the presence of viscous property of fluid, we find good processability in polymer materials. When we compare polymer materials with other ceramic and metals, we talk about uh, this parameter. Uh, in favor of polymers as good processability because of the presence of viscous component in the polymer molecule along with elastic component we can get uh, very good strength properties as well as good processability as compared to metals and ceramics. Let us discuss about that. Now, having the, having the presence of elastic component and viscous component, if there is viscous component, we call that polymer is amorphous. So, amorphous polymers behave like a glass at low temperature, means below certain temperature say below glass transition temperature T g, it is rigid glass like material, it can break like a glass. For example, say a vulcanized or a cross linked ball made of rubber, say rubber ball, rubber ball which shows bouncing property, which is flexible and it shows bouncing characteristics. If that rubber ball is immersed in liquid nitrogen, it becomes very hard and if it is dropped from hand onto a rigid floor, it breaks into pieces, shatters into pieces. That happens uh, due to the reason that uh, this polymer, the rubber or the ball made of rubber that goes below its glass tension temperature. T g of natural rubber is around minus 72 degrees Celsius. And 
liquid nitrogen temperature is much below that. So, uh, at that temperature the it, it becomes brittle like glass. So, since natural rubber is amorphous that amorphous rubber ball in the amorphous, uh, 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 amorphous rubber in the ball that becomes glass like and breaks like a glass below this glass strain temperature. And you say rubber is solid at intermediate temperature above T g and viscous liquid as the temperature is further raised. So, between T m melting temperature and T g at this intermediate temperature it uh, becomes it behaves like a flexible uh, material soft flexible material and its property can be explained in this fashion at small deformation this mechanical behavior at low temperature of that kind of material may show some elastic behavior and which can be explained with the help of this equation tau is equal to f uh, uh, tau is equal to e into gamma where tau is applied stress and E is the modulus of elasticity or Young's modulus and gamma is the axial strain if it is uh, tensile stress applied on the material. And the stress E can be defined as the load divided by area or force divided by area. So, this applied stress for F by A and the constant which is the uh, modulus of elasticity and this elongation which is the uh, is a dimensionless quantity the change in the length beyond original length divided by the original length delta L by L 0 is the uh, strain this is a dimensionless quantity. So, stress is proportional to strain up to the uh, elastic limit and which is time independent uh, this is, this is with the definition of elasticity. So, this component if in uh, the, that polymer is solid this elasticity elastic component is present over there and that component is contributed by a crystalline part of the polymer. Now, if the polymer contains amorphous regions because a polymer may be considered a semi crystalline material having such domains of crystallites uh, dispersed in dispersed in uh, a, 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 in a flexible matrix flexible matrix like this so it can be viewed like this I mean to say that a polymer chain can start from here having flexible linkage. A certain segment of that polymer molecule may form some crystalline regions or domains. That means, a polymer can pass through flexible region to elast your um, uh, um, uh, crystalline region, then flexible region then crystalline region, then flexible region, then crystalline region this way. So, in fact, we can have distribution of some crystallites in uh, in an amorphous state this kind of this kind of morphology is known as fringed micellar morphology or fringed micellar concept. Now, here this crystalline domains that means, uh, certain segments of the polymer chain uh, enter into form long range order long, long range order of the uh, that uh, segmental part of the polymer chain which is crystalline connected through amorphous regions 
So, that crystallite regions dispersed in amorphous region constitute as a whole the viscoelastic material. But the viscosity property is contributed by these crystallite zones and elastic viscosity property is contributed as a viscosity visco, sorry I am sorry viscosity property is contributed by these flexible zones and whereas the elastic property is contributed by the crystalline zones crystalline domains. So, this vis, viscosity property uh, elasticity property is contributed uh, can be uh, defined can be explained with the help of that Hooke's law whereas, amorphous property can be explained with the help of viscosity phenomena. Now, at intermediate temperature a rubbery solid exhibits the combined mechanical characteristics of these two extremes the properties of solid and the properties of fluids properties of liquids the, this such type of condition is termed as viscoelasticity. elasticity. Elastic deformation is instantaneous as I mentioned which is independent of time and is totally recovered. Now, let us look into this flow curves. Now, this is the first one shows an instantaneous load time curve. Here this represent the time of application of load and this represent the time of release of load. So, on application of uh, this load is applied at this time and load is released at this time and this strain time profile here you see the strain is increased on application of load that strain is maintained so long the load is kept over the specimen load is uh, kept on the specimen then on release of load the strain is recovered. So, this kind of strain time profile is found in case of elastic body elastic material and this is known as elastic deformation and there is total recovery of the strain which was present at the time of application that means the, the dimension which was initially uh, there in the body dimension of the body that dimension is totally recovered on release of the stress this kind of phenomena stress time strain time profile is used to explain the elastic deformation behavior of materials. Now, if the strain behaves in a different fashion say this is the application of the time of application of load on application of load there can be some instantaneous deformation that means, some uh, strain is found some deformation is found on the body. Then slowly with time on increase of load strain goes on increasing. Now, when that load is removed from such body what happens there can be certain recovery of the strain. Now, here you see this is the instantaneous strain which is parallel to the strain axis without any time lag the strain was available. Then gradually strain increases with time as the load increases, but on release of the stress now this body is supposed to recover its original dimension that we supposed to come back to this stage, but it is not, but here it shows some amount of recovery then this is the permanent strain which remains or permanent deformation which remain within the body. Why this hap happens? That's, that can be explained with the help of the crystalline and amorphous morphology of polymers or this is a property of polymer having both elastic property of solid here as we see in this case and viscous property of fluid as we see in this case. So, this kind of deformation is known as 
plastic deformation. And this happens due to molecular slippage, slippage of the molecules one over the other during such deformation and which cannot be regained. That means, such molecular slippage leads to some permanent change in the materials morphology. Whereas, in case of elastic body that permanent, permanent slippage occurs, slippage occurs, but permanent um, slippage does not occur. This can be explained if you look into this configuration in a simple fashion. Suppose, this is a molecule having such entangled morphology. Okay. Suppose, we consider that this is an, this is an example of elastic material. Now, if we apply some tensile stress, what happens? This will be elongated, this can be elongated to like a thread, straight thread, an application of tensile stress. Now, such elongations that means, up to this deformation, it is we can consider that in case of elastic body, elastic system, this this is instantness. It does not, uh, uh, it is not time dependent. Now, stress is released. That means, it can, it should come back to this original configuration. So, this is a reversible phenomena. On application of stress, this entanglement is opened, uncoiling, unfolding can happen and it is straightened on release of the stress, it reverts back to this original configuration. This kind of phenomenon is known as elastic deformation or elastic behavior. Now, here many other things uh, may be explained which is found in case of polymer materials. If we find that there is some entanglement, intramolecular entanglement, intramolecular coiling as well as there can be intermolecular entanglement. So, this is one molecule and this is another molecule. So, this, this is this shows an example of entanglement of two molecules of two molecules. Now, when such tensile load is applied, what can happen in this case? This folded segments can be unfolded during such unfolding what happens? Slippage of the segments one over the other occurs that depends on the extent of deformation, extent of deformation to what extent it is deformed, to what elongation it is stressed. On release of the stress, it may not come back to its original configuration. If there is permanent slippage of say this red molecule over this blue molecule, it cannot come back to this original or initial morphology. So, it cannot be reversible. Here as you have seen in this case it is reversible, in this case it is irreversible. That happens due to permanent slippage of the molecule as a whole. Now, here in this case such small deformation to a small extent can unfold the unfold a folded segment, but if the amplitude of such deformation is less it can revert back in this case it cannot that leads to permanent deformation. And here is the phenomena, here is the flow curve this strain time profile it leaves behind this permanent deformation it cannot come back to the original come back to the zero strain situation. This kind of material is known as leathery material 
and which is viscoelastic. The contribution from the elastic part of the material and this contribution from the fluid part or liquid part of the material or uh, viscous part of the material. So, this material is a characteristic of viscoelastic material and we find such type of beaver in case of leathers, leathery material. So, this phenomena is known as time dependent strain phenomena. There can be another situation where again it can have this instantaneous deformation on application of stress. Here the in the later part this deformation with time can be linear with time. In this case deformation is non-linear. Now, this is not a purely fluid behavior, but due to the presence of this uh, elastic part it behaves like non-linear deformation, but here this part shows complete uh, property of viscous fluid. On application of stress strain increases with time in a linear fashion. This is a this is a kind of behavior obtained from rubbery material, so viscoelastic rubbery material and this is also a time case of time dependent strain. If we look into the viscous behavior or viscosity phenomena of fluid say liquid here the strain is not instantaneous. In this case some instantaneous strain was present, in this case instantaneous strain was present, but in this case no such instantaneous strain is visible here. It is a purely liquid, it is a pure liquid without having any property of solid and it shows the deformation on application of stress and this deformation increases with time and when the, that stress is released this the same deformation maintains without any recovery. In this case you see due to the presence of this elastic component there can be a certain amount of recovery due to the presence of elastic component and strain continues, strain maintains due to the presence of the viscous component and this is a case of permanent deformation, this is a case of permanent deformation and this is a case of instantaneous deformation. So, these are these two are the cases of viscoelastic materials, one is leathery type, one is rubbery type, in this case it is a purely viscous material, purely liquid, pure liquid material which, which shows non-recoverable deformation. So, if a solid is ideal and if that solid ideal solid is subjected to a shear stress tau s, then the shear strain gamma s developed due to such shear stress application as a function of the stress applied that can be represented by tau s is equal to g gamma s. Shear stress it looks like this suppose you can have a stack of playing cards, you can place the stack of playing cards on the board uh, on the table and you can suppose this, this is the stack of playing cards, you put your fingers like this, finger like this and apply some stress in this direction. So, this way if you do what will happen the topmost card will move the farthest distance or maximum distance and the card below that will move little less distance than that of the topmost card. So, that is a kind of deformation. So, if you consider a material of some imaginary layers, the topmost layer on which the stress is applied that shear stress is applied this way, that shear stress that help some that uh, causes some deformation on the topmost layer and the amount of deformation is less on the um, layer below that. So, this happens due to the frictional force or resistance offered by the uh, bottom layer on the topmost layer. 
that kind of deformation is known as shear deformation and the load the kind of load which is applied or stress applied on that uh, body is known as shear stress. So, this shear stress and shear strain that is also proportional and the proportionality constant is G shear modulus or the modulus of rigidity. When a fixed and constant stress is applied to a liquid or fluid body, it undergoes continuously increasing amount of strain or deformation which is non recoverable on withdrawal of stress as I have explained just before this. A liquid is thus a material of zero yield value <coughs> whereas, a solid shows a finite yield value, <coughs> yield means deformation value in which the strain is a function of stress as well as time. <coughs> so, the shear stress tau s <coughs> applied to a fluid mass, ideal fluid mass that maintained at constant temperature is linearly and directly proportional to the velocity gradient. So, in case of <coughs> a fluid mass, if some shear stress is applied that is proportional to the velocity gradient. As we have seen in case of that <coughs> uh, shear stress versus shear strain, the proportionality of shear stress versus shear strain and the <coughs> proportionality constant is known as shear modulus. In case of a pure ideal fluid, if some shear stress is applied, it is proportional to the velocity gradient dv dr. That means, the velocity gradient the, the velocity profile in case of a fluid flowing in a pipe uh, can be also uh, developed uh, can, can also be explained, where the velocity of the uh, layer at the center, velocity of the uh, layer at the center of the pipe is maximum, whereas the velocity at the layer adjacent to the wall of the pipe is minimum. So, that gives a concept of velocity gradient and the proportionality constant in this case is the viscosity eta, which is designated by eta, is the coefficient of viscosity. And coefficient of viscosity is again related to another parameter which is phi known as the fluidity. So, phi is the reciprocal of viscosity or the vice versa. So, eta is 1 by 1 upon phi and that is equal to tau s by dv dr and eta is the coefficient of viscosity and phi is the fluidity. <coughs> the above relationship is known as Newton's law obeyed by Newtonian fluid or ideal fluid. So, from this we understand that a ideal fluid or ideal liquid which follows or obeys this Newton law where the shear stress is directly proportional to the velocity gradient and the um, proportionality constant is the coefficient of viscosity that kind of fluid mass is known as ideal fluid or Newton, New, Newtonian fluid. <coughs> also, we can say that this uh, d gamma s d gamma s shear strain is equal to velocity gradient d v d t we can also write this way. This is the shear strain rate we can have d gamma s d t shear strain rate uh, can be equal to this d v d r velocity gradient. So, uh, we can replace this shear strain rate with the velocity gradient like d v d r and if we replace that value. Uh, in that uh, equation of um, flow equation of in Newtonian fluid here hmm, dv dr if we rep replace this dv dr with this uh, d gamma s dt the equation becomes tau s equal to eta into d gamma s dt. This equation st uh, states that the shear stress which is the tangential force per unit area of the surface on which the force acts that shear stress is required to shear a Newtonian fluid and that is linearly and directly proportional to the shear strain rate. So, what we 
have got that shear stress is directly proportional to the shear strain rate. That means, if we want to uh, increase the deformation rate of deformation rate of deformation of the fluid. So, we have to increase the shear stress apply the shear stress we have to increase the stress uh, proportionally, proportionally otherwise we cannot make uh, that material um, deform to a particular extent what we require. This equation is very much useful or can be used to explain the behavior of the polymers during processing and fabrication during compounding. That means, one can have an estimate of energy or mixing power, mixing power, power of the machine, mixing machine, power of the motor that is related to this tau s uh, equal to eta into the strain rate d gamma s d t. That means, how much shear stress is required to have a proper flow characteristic, proper uh, fluidity of the material say during mixing or compounding of a polymer or a formulation having polymer and different additives as well as in case of making blend of polymer 1 with polymer 2 etcetera etcetera. How much shear stress is required to obtain a proper fluidity, so that proper mixing is there, proper compound is formed properly the additives, functional additives during compounding uh, how they are uh, dispersed or to make a uniform dispersion of the additives to make a proper mixing of the components to have a compatible or miscible blend. This information is necessary and that can uh, be available that means, how much stress is to be applied that can be calculated with the help of this equation. So, a Newtonian fluid being completely devoid of elasticity which is a which uh, shows a continuous deformation as we have seen in this case this diagram this diagram the viscosity behavior of a uh, an ideal liquid this uh, linear increase of strain with time. So, that uh, Newtonian fluid being completely devoid of elasticity without having any component of solid that is considered as purely viscous material and by mechanical analogy its deformation and flow under stress is represented by a weightless piston moving in a cylinder or a dash pot filled with a medium that offers some uh, resistance. The amount of flow say it can be viewed like this so this is a cylinder and dashboard so this is the piston <coughs> like this so uh, it is this piston is weightless this piston is weightless piston um, moving in a cylinder or a dashboard this is the dust pot, this is the piston uh, with a medium that offers some resistance. So, uh, this uh, movement of this piston within this cylinder or dust pot uh, can be compared with the, with the flow behavior of a fluid. The amount of flow gamma s that is the strain is a linear function of time. Say, gamma s is a linear, uh, linear uh, function of time. So, gamma s is equal to tau s by eta into t and tau s or tau s uh, into phi into t.
Now, this diagram shows the flow curve, flow of a Newtonian fluid with the help of this dust spot, piston dust spot model uh, uh, sketch. So, here you see a constant shear stress tau s, tau s is applied at T 0. On application of stress, deformation increases linearly and at time t 1 that tau s that stress tau s is removed. How it can be visualized with the help of piston and, and the cylinder? Here this is the application of stress where the piston remains at the bottom or it is moved up at time t 1. It was at the at t 0 it was at the bottom at t time t 1 it is moved up. up. Now, here the, by doing so this uh, piston will get some resistance from this wall of the cylinder for which that stress tau s is required to move it up from the bottom, from the bottom to take it up that tau, stress tau s is required and the slope that means the ratio of tau s by eta the viscosity is the slope. So, this is a flow curve for a Newtonian fluid or is a strain versus time profile. And if we make a plot of uh, rate of shear stress, rate of shear, rate of shear t gamma s t t rate of shear is the rate of shear d gamma s d t means deformation rate, rate of deformation we can say and this is shear stress. So, shear uh, strain rate we can say also shear strain rate versus shear stress curve this is also a linear in case of a non Newtonian fluid a Newtonian fluid. So, we see the we see that this is the behavior of a Newtonian fluid or an ideal fluid. Now, our polymer materials are non Newtonian materials, non Newtonian, non Newtonian material or non Newtonian fluid. It shows a peculiar behavior here. Now, if we make a plot of shear stress versus shear strain rate, now ideal plastic bodies ideal plastic bodies known as bingham plastic body if we explain the behavior of such kind of plastic material what happens on application of stress there is some instantaneous uh, your deformation you can say that means this much of stress it can bear without any application of this um, strain. So, so uh, shear strain at the 0 shear strain at the 0, zero shear strain rate shear, shear strain rate uh, this is the stress value which it can bear and beyond which it requires in increase in stress value with the that means the uh, variation of shear stress with the shear rate increases linearly that variation occurs at much higher shear stress that variation of shear stress with shear strain rate occurs for bingham plastic occurs at much higher stress after which it becomes linear and there can be other materials which are termed as straight vein and body straight vein and body which that does not uh, uh, show any increase of uh, that does not require any increase of shear strain rate uh, shear strain rate remains constant at any particular shear stress. These are the two cases and these are some real situations which we observe with polymer materials. Now, if you look at this curve which is concave downward this shows a pseudo plastic behavior. Pseudo plastic means 
it behaves like a plastic, but on application of shear strain, a shear stress, its viscosity decreases. We can bring an analogy uh, to the uh, sand bed on seashore. On seashore, we find there is a sand bed which apparently looks like dry sand bed, but on application of throbbing force with the help of your foot, you will find that slowly waters, water is coming out from the sand bed, although it appears that there is no water. Where from that water has come? Now, there is a property of sand and water that water molecules form an envelope or coating over sand particle that be, that's, uh, becomes set that uh, water envelope uh, uh, just uh, remains tightly bound over the over each and every sand particle when it is under static situation when there is no load. But on application of pulsat, uh, pulsating load what happens those envelope water envelope layers breaks and water molecules get released from the sand particle water comes out and the sand particles um, uh, appears to be little fluidy. Uh, that uh, some water molecules, water comes out, it uh, appears to be fluid. So, that kind of behavior is known as thixotropy. It is a kind of shear thinning phenomena, shear thinning phenomena means on application of stress, on application of stress what happens this, uh, uh, this viscosity is reduced, viscosity decreases. The decrease of viscosity on application of stress that means on a, or increase of shear strain rate, increase of shear strain uh, sorry the shear stress on application of shear stress gradually the requirement of stress decreases. Here you see shear stress decreases gradually with the uh, increase of shear strain rate. So, that kind of behavior is known as thixotropy. This is also uh, this phenomena is also visualized in case of plastic emulsion paint. In which some pigment particles are dispersed in a vehicle, that vehicle is made of some polymer, water soluble polymer and water and some other organic solvents, their pigments are dispersed and when it is kept uh, in static condition in a container that remains uh, at, uh, almost in a solid like mass, if you open the lid and just make the upside down, the paint does not pour down that is due to the uh, settling of those pigment particles uh, by these uh, vehicle molecules or the water molecules. Now, on application of stress what happens? It becomes thin, it becomes uh, the viscosity is reduced, viscosity decreases and then with the help of brass one can use that paint over wall. The opposite behavior is found in case of deratant material which is known as shear thickening. That means, on app, if you increase the stirring rate, rate of stirring, it uh, it thickens the viscosity gradually increases. So, increase of viscosity with shearing is known as relatancy property, decrease of viscosity with shearing is known as thixotropic property. And one there can be a material showing both the behaviors of thixotropy as well as relatancy that is known as complex and if it is purely linear that is a Newtonian fluid. And that viscoelastic phenomena can be explained with the help of mechanical models. One is Maxwell model, another is void model. This is the Maxwell model where that elastic component is represented by a spring, where this viscous component is represented by a dashpot. Okay. So, 
on application of stress that means some tensile stress if is uh, on the, uh, is applied what will happen this is deformation will be will occur in this a part this viscous part and that can be accommodated by that that can be um, accommodated by this spring um, uh, the deformation of that deformation is can be accommodated by the spring and this is in uh, this is in series uh, connection this is in a parallel connection so a viscoelastic body is assumed to be composed of an elastic element represented by a steel spring and a viscous element represented by a piston and a dust pot a simple model is shown below which combines the pair placed in series maxwell unit in this case and another combined in parallel void unit for a maxwell unit exemplified by a fiber containing crystalline and amorphous regions the overall rate of flow overall rate of flow combining the contribution of the elastic or viscous elements is represented by this equation this is the uh, this is the uh, elastic element this is the viscous element and the corresponding equation for shear stress tau s uh, is uh, given by this d gamma s dt is equal to 1 by g into d tau s dt plus tau s by eta. On rearrangement of that equation the flow equation becomes d tau dt is equal to e into d gamma dt minus e by eta into tau and that is equal to e into d gamma dt minus tau by eta uh, tau by lambda. Now, here a new parameter has come this lambda which is equal to eta by E is a characteristic constant of the selected material and that is known as relaxation time. Relaxation time that means some load is applied then it is released so before coming to its original uh, configuration uh, it should get some minimum time it should, some minimum time should be allowed so that slowly that segment is relaxed. Uh, relaxed and it comes back to its uh, tries to come back to its original conformation that is known as stress relaxation. Now, this stress relaxation on application of an initial stress tau 0 on a viscoelastic material represented by a Maxwell unit as I have shown in a series con um, combination of spring and a dashboard the deformation will instantly occur entirely in the spring deformation occur in, in case of uh, entirely on a spring that is the elastic deformation. If held at a constant strain there yeah, this constant strain the d gamma dt would be, would be equal to 0 and flow takes place in the viscous element only okay. and progressive decay of stress takes place that progressive decay is called relaxation. The residual stress at any time t after application of stress is obtained by obtained from this equation tau is equal to tau 0 into e to the power minus t by lambda. This relaxation time lambda is the time over which the stress decays to 1 by e of its original value that is tau t is equal to tau 0 by e. Now, for a viscoelastic material combining an elastic and a viscous element in parallel. Now, the stress required to maintain a fixed strain would depend on the rate of the deformation. The stress reaches a constant value as the desired strain is achieved and thus the system is not associated with a relaxation effect under this condition. By convention the viscoelastic modulus E r can be computed as the ratio of the stress measured at 10 second after straining designated as tau 10 and the strain gamma. So, E r becomes equal to becomes equal to tau 10 by gamma the total strain gamma consists of contribution from elastic and viscoelastic deformation. So, this elastic uh, elastic to gamma from elastic component and uh, gamma v from the viscous component. So, this so both elastic and viscous components contributes to the total strain of the body. Thank you.